My research began when I did my PhD. I discovered there hadn't been any research into homicide since about the 1960s, any academic research, that is. I went into prisons and I interviewed men who'd killed other men or who'd attempted to harm other men. Early on when I did my homicide research, I came up with a typology of homicide. Different classifications of homicide based on victim-offender relationship and perhaps where the homicide occurred. That ended up being reproduced in the Murder Manual, which is the definitive guide to homicide investigation in England and Wales. What was interesting about that was if you can begin to unravel the different circumstances of a homicide, that helps with your investigative needs because different homicides have different investigative opportunities. As years progressed, I most recently became interested in the other side of the coin really, which is the police investigation of homicide how they conduct their investigations and particularly how it's changed because obviously given the huge advances in science and technology, homicide investigation has been transformed unimaginably. Well, I first met Fiona some 15 years ago when she was studying for her doctorate. She was studying homicide. It's a great benefit to the police service. We can have an extra set of eyes, somebody looking how we do our business. Well, I don't think in general terms, policing has the skill and the time to look back at things. I think Fiona is able to tease out what does work and what can help. Back in 2012, I decided to extend my research from the UK and I had an opportunity through a colleague in an American university to take that research to the US and I just thought it would be a wonderful opportunity to see what were some of the interesting differences. And so I spent a large chunk of a year just outside Washington, D.C., and I got into one homicide unit in particular, just following them around, shadowing them, just going to work with them every day. Just had the opportunity to just completely embrace the research, and it was a wonderful experience. CERN is an acronym for the Criminal Investigation Research Network. I established it back in 2012, so it brings together academic experts with practitioners from all around the world. And the idea is that I want research to be operationally relevant. And I also want to cross international borders because we learn so much about what we don't know by seeing investigations in different contexts in different places. The recent funding award that I received from the Leverhulme Trust has emerged from CERN in a sense because I began to collaborate with two other academics. We're interested in how detectives and scientists come together to use science and technology within their investigations. We're going to very carefully map how at every moment in an investigation a particular piece of science or technology, and this ranges from DNA through to fibre analysis, footprint analysis, social network analysis, some homicide investigations make really good use of suspects' Facebook sites because they leave them open. So we're going to chart how it's used, but also how scientists and detectives together negotiate what is truth, what is good evidence, why do they discard some bits of evidence and move forward with others. I think that there's great scope to enhance homicide investigation. It's about 90% that we solve at the moment in Britain. Well, I don't think that's good enough. I think we should aim to solve every single one as effectively as possible and not have miscarriages of justice along the way but also I think it's about the impact to the wider community. And so I think there's things that we can do to really make a difference to how those investigations are conducted.